Amen. We are live tonight, Wednesday night. It is now April the 28th, and uh, we are going to share with you tonight out of the book of Exodus. But before we go to the book of Exodus, let me share with you tonight that uh, there are some prayer requests come in of people that's going to be Sister Debbie Campbell's going to be having surgery Friday, so let's remember her in prayer as we as we pray, and uh, others that have sent in requests, let's let's ask that God would would help them, and uh, we would pray that God would be with them in surgeries, that He would be with them in their doctor visits. And there's some that went to doctors this week, got pretty good news, and we're just praising the Lord for that. And uh, we're just trusting God that uh, God will be the God to you that uh, you're seeking God for. Amen. And I believe Facebook has fixed it again. I can see your comments on the left, and I'm most appreciative of that. So good to see each one of you checking in and you there commenting. Uh, good to see you. Let's, let's pray tonight. God, we pray and we ask you that uh, those that's going in for surgery this week, and God, those that's already been to the doctor and got pretty good reports, but yet we're still believing and we're still trusting that uh, you would reach into their lives and reach into their homes and touch them. And God, for Sister Campbell, as she goes to surgery this week, we just ask you, God, to go with her, give her peace. Give her a comfort. Give her strength, I pray. Lord, I just ask you for situations of uh, individuals that we know of tonight that we're just believing, God, that your right hand and you, the power and the authority, God, you are able to take care of those things. And tonight we pray for uh, the Mises there in Sullivan County. God, that you would touch Sister Donita, Lord, that you would you'd give her a healing tonight. Yes. And uh, just watch over their home, watch over their lives. And God, we agree with them together in prayer. Yes. And everybody says, Amen. Amen. Exodus chapter 6. And uh, good to see each of you checking in. And uh, we're going to go straight to Exodus chapter 6, verse Number two, and the Bible said, And God spake unto Moses and said unto him, I am the Lord. Now stay, stay with me right there. I am the Lord. And I appeared unto Abraham, unto Isaac, and unto Jacob by the name of God Almighty. But by my name Jehovah was I not known to them. And I have also established my covenant with them to give them the land of Canaan, the land of their pilgrimage, wherein they were strangers. And I have also heard the groaning of the children of Israel, whom the Egyptians have kept in bondage, and I have remembered my covenant. I share with you tonight and and I, I kind of put over in, in the topic, do you know God or knowing God? And uh, what caught my attention was in chapter 6 there, when he said, I, I appeared or I appeared unto Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob by the name of God Almighty. Now, when we look at that, uh, back in, in a time, uh, in, in a, a period of time, and uh, a patriotical time and a period uh, he was known to those uh, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. He was known as God and he was El Shaddai. Now those are pretty much how they knew God at that time and that's why we come into verse 6 and he said uh, that he appeared unto them and he appeared unto them in the name and by the name of God Almighty, El Shaddai. Then he says, but I, by my name, Jehovah, 
he said, was I not known unto them? And, and the reason that he was not known unto them, that now Moses was getting ready to proclaim unto them uh, for the first time, there was about to be a revelation here of the name Yahweh as the God of Israel. Uh, now Isaac and Jacob, uh, they, that, that was it. And, and he said, I appeared unto Abraham and I appeared unto Isaac and I appeared unto Jacob as the God Almighty, El Shaddai. But my name Yahweh was I not known unto them. He was not known unto them. Now the revelation of Yahweh here is uh, that, that it was the first introduction unto the children of Israel. Now when we think about knowing the Lord, and uh, we know and I know and, and, and you that, that study the word and, and live live for God, you know that God has always been a God that has walked with, with the, his people and, and he's walked with the people of God, the generations and, and many generations God has, has walked with. Uh, he's been there with them. He's been there for them. And we can even say that he's here today and he is with you and I. Uh, he has revealed his nature according to his purposes and the needs of his people. Now, prior to Moses coming to the children of Israel, God was known unto them as, as the God Almighty, the El Shaddai. Now, Abraham and Isaac and, and Jacob, they knew him as that name. They knew him because at that time, and the reason they knew him as God Almighty, they knew him as his, and his mighty power to protect them from their enemies. Now, they knew that God who sits on the throne, that he would protect them from their enemies, and that's exactly what God, God done uh, up to this time that the children of Israel, they found themselves in, in bondage, and, and now we find them needing the mighty hand and the mighty power of God to protect them and to lead them out of bondage. Now, Moses and, and, the, and the Israelites, what they began to learn was that God was Lord. We know him today as Lord. Uh, he did protect them from their enemies. And I can tell you today, God still protects his children from their enemies. Somebody said, but pastor, I don't, I don't have an enemy. Don't kid yourself. Uh, you've got one enemy that, that's strong and his forces are strong. But notice the power of God and the hand of God. And, and, and what God can do is greater than the power of, of the devil and the enemy who's come against you. And I told you in weeks past, he comes only for to kill, steal, and destroy. But God's power and that same power that Isaac, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob knew, praise God, we still know that same power today. Now, Moses and the Israelites they learned God that he was Lord. He was master over everything, over every nation and over everything, amen. Now, God, not only did God deliver them from the most powerful ruler in the world, but he brought them to the promised land. Now, my question to you today, do we? how do we know God? Uh, I, I was looking back in chapter number three of Exodus when God spoke to Moses and he called Moses from the burning bush. And I have never had that experience to where that I'd be going down the street or, or going somewhere and all of a sudden I would see something of, of that magnitude uh, that, that would just, uh, and what really, really got a hold of Moses was that the bush was not consumed. And, and there it was when, when he saw this bush and, and this bush was not consumed, uh, he, he even 
started to turn away from the bush, but when he started to turn away from the bush, then God said that he called unto him out of the midst of the bush and said, Moses, Moses. And he said, and I like these words, here am I. Praise God. What I would like for you as a child of God tonight to recognize the voice of God when God begins to call you and God begins to direct you that you hear the voice of God and you know the power of God, you know the authority of God, and you would cry back to God and you would simply say, here am I, amen. And uh, God told him, said, draw not nigh hither. Uh, and there it was, the bush was burning with fire and the bush was not consumed. Well, that, that kind of drew uh, the attention of Moses to the bush and God began to speak out of the bush. Now, let me tell you something. God can speak to you in any way, in any form, in any, any directive that God would desire to speak to you. Uh, and I mean that. And I, I was the other day, and uh, there was something happening in my life, and I'm still looking for... Uh, whatever this meant. And I was, uh, I was kindly in a, in a, I wasn't sound asleep, but I was kind of asleep. And all of a sudden, it was like a voice came to me. And, and it just simply said, this voice simply said, Russia. And, and I, I'm, I'm thinking, and, and, I, and I woke up. And I thought, Lord, did you just speak to me something about Russia? And sure enough, this week I have been watching the news and I have been watching post and I, I've been watching some different people in their writing and I, I've been paying real close attention to what's happening in Russia right now. And, and while I, I heard that, I, I'm still searching and, and, and I'm waiting for uh, the answer because I really believe God put that in my spirit at that time. Now, that, that may have been a warning. Uh, I'm, I'm holding on and trusting God that uh, it will be revealed whatever it is. But trust me, I am watching Russia and listening very, very tentatively right now. Now, as God speaks to us, and sure enough, some of you might say, well, you, that was just you. Well, you can think what you want to think, but I know what I felt in my spirit. I knew how I felt when I, when I woke up, amen. And, and it, was, it was different. And I, I didn't go to bed thinking about Russia. I had, not thinking, I had not thought about Russia prior to this. I've not heard anybody uh, even discuss Russia. And uh, somehow, and, and honestly, I don't, I don't even know how, why I'm getting here, but it must be for a reason. Uh, but somehow, and, and I, I don't know how, how this came to be, but somehow Putin's face just came, came up. Now, it may have something to do with him. I'm waiting and I'm trusting that whatever this is, God, God will eventually reveal it to me. Now, we've got to know that God was able and still able if God delivered the children of Israel from the most powerful ruler in the world, I'm telling you, our God can still deliver the children of God, amen. Now, not only did he deliver them, but he led them to that promised land. Thank God he, he told them, you know, there's a land. And, 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 and when Moses went down, and now we know how God appeared to Moses. And uh, I think about how God appears to us. And, and I, was, I was praying uh, yesterday and, 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 and praying and asking God uh, about some different things. And I was meditating on how God appeared to Moses out of the burning bush. And it dawned on me, and I'll share 
I'll share a little bit more here. If we see the children of Israel came to know him as Lord, and they experienced him as such. They experienced him as Lord. And that powerful power over pagan gods of, of that day. God will continue to reveal his character to you and I according to your needs and his purpose, amen. Now, now stay with me just a moment. And I thought about Moses, and I, I, really, I really think about Moses a lot, him and, uh, him and Noah, I think about Noah a lot. But here's Moses, and, and he, he, he's got this commission from God to go down, go down there into Egypt and, and to tell the children of Israel, I'm, I'm going to lead you out of here. And, you know, Moses conveying back and forth to God, and he says, God, how, when I go down there, how are they going to know? And, and you've, heard, you've heard it over and over again. But notice God, when God says, I am that I am. And God said, you go down there and, and, and you go down there and you, you tell them this. I am that I am and that I am have sent you. Now, they knew him. The children of Israel, they knew him as God Almighty. They knew him and they're here now that Moses is going to introduce to them Yahweh, that God is, is, is the God of, of, of deliverance. Not only God Almighty, he's now Lord over nations. He's Lord over everything. That, that's what they're getting ready to find out. And then we find them on their journey. God appeared to Moses in the burning bush. Then he comes out here and he's facing the, the, the water and, and, and the cry of the people would have been better off back there. And all of a sudden, God says, do this. And Moses done what God told him to do. And all of a sudden, there's a, a great, What? There's a, a wind that comes and begins to divide the water. So God came in the wind. And the waters were parted, and we know the story well. And the children of Israel march over, and they go over on dry land. Now watch this. The same water that God divided, the provider... Yahweh, the provider Yahweh, as he provided the water to be walled on each side and the children of Israel to walk across. And I'm not talking about just a few. And they walked over on to the other side. And God uses the same water that he has divided. to destroy the enemy, the most powerful during that time, the greatest ruler of the world during that time, no doubt. So God will continue to reveal his character to you and to me according to your needs and his purpose. At that time, Moses needed the water to be parted. And God appears to him, and what's he do? He appears, he appears and, and parts the water. Now they're safely on the other side, and now Moses needs God, and the children of Israel need God, and God does not fail them, because I'm telling you, Pharaoh and his army, buddy, and his hot chariots, they was hot on their trail, and God had already hardened the heart of Pharaoh. Pharaoh, and when God hardened the heart of Pharaoh, 
I believe that that that, that pursuit was so strong. I'm going to go. I'm going to get you. That that's my interpretation of it. I'm not going to let you go. But God had another plan. God had another purpose. And he saw the needs of his people at that time. Now, you and I will come to know more about him who sits on the throne and him who sits by his right hand and the Holy Spirit that lives and dwells in the lives of believers. We will know more about him as we begin to obey him, amen. Now watch this. He may come in different different ways. What are you talking about, Pastor? Well, when you're grieving, and, and you know what? We're human sometimes. There'll be people grieving, and, and all of a sudden, we may say the same, the wrong things at the wrong time. Well, that's not what they need during that time. I'm telling you what, if you're sitting there grieving, I come in and I tell you, I start telling you jokes and trying to get you to laugh. That's not what you need at that time. So when you are grieving and I'm grieving or, or the child of God is grieving, the Lord will come to you as a comforter, amen. He comforts us in our times of, of trouble and that time of, of grieving. He comes as a comforter. When we're in need, he will come as a provider. He will provide for your needs. I was listening last night, way up in the morning, and, and I heard Sonia Isaac sing the song, Consider the Lilies, how they don't toil nor they spin. But they, we have a heavenly Father. You and I have a heavenly Father with a heart full of mercy and a heart full of love for you and I. Consider, if God considers the lilies of the field, how much more does he care about you and I to provide for us exactly what we need and when we need it, amen. You know, today it might be a financial blessing and God will provide your financial blessing. Next week it may be a, you, you may need food. And I'm going to tell you, we, we serve a God that's proven in the word of God. And I, I know what the world say. Come on, some of them stories in that Bible, that they're just, they just seem, they just seem so outfetched that, that they can't be true. How that God would command the ravens to bring to the man of God. You let the world think what the world thinks. You've got to believe what God has put in the word as, as truth, amen. God is able to provide. Yahweh is able to provide for you and I, just like he did for the children of Israel when they wandered for 40 long years. And again, I, I can hear the word. I can hear the old world out there saying, nah, yeah, that's just a story. There, there's no truth in that. I'm telling you something. I, I see the word confirmation here. God, God will always confirm what he's put in his word. Amen. And God is still God. He's the same God today that he was when he, when, when he was there before Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and they knew him as God Almighty. And he's the same God that appeared unto Moses out of the burning bush. He's still the same God today. So yes, when you have a need, he comes as, as your provider. And then when you face a great and serious challenge in your life, and there's not a one of you out there that I'm talking to tonight that's probably ever suffered and, and faced a serious challenge. Well, let me tell you something. When you find yourself in that condition, in that situation, he will appear to you 
and he, re he will reveal himself that he really is God Almighty, amen. Now, when we think about our lives, we think about our character, our understanding of God's character, who God is, knowing God. Do, do we know, really, do we really know, and, and, and honestly, are, are there churches and people out there that just say they know God, but do they really know what God can do for you and for them? Now, uh, hmm. we should know his character greater today than when we first started ser serving him. We, we should know him. We should know his character. We, we, sh we should know him more and greater than when we first started serving him the Lord, or we became a Christian. Now, the sad part of it is, you that are in the church, you, you, you that are saved, you that know the Lord, uh, you, you should know him better today than you did five or 10 years ago. If you don't know him any better than you did when you first started, uh, all I can say to you is you've got a major problem you need, you need to deal with. It. Now, here's the sad part of the world in which we live in. There's people and there's even Christians who continue to live year after year with the same basic knowledge of God as when they first started walking with him. That's not what God intends for the body. Uh, I've pastored this same church for 43 years. I'm in my 43rd year. Many of you know that. And, and I often say to people, if you don't know me by now, you're not going to know me. Well, after 43 years, you should know me. You should know I'm not going to do anything that's going to bring harm to the church or I'm not going to bring anything that will bring harm to the body. I'm, I'm just not going to do that. So you, you know me now better than you knew me when I first came to the Lawrence Church of God as pastor. Uh, it should be no different with God. Uh, matter of fact, I know you better now than I knew you when I came here. You, you know me, I know you. We, 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 we're the body. We are the church. And uh, our knowledge of one another has, has increased. You know my likes, you know my dislikes. You know where I like to go, where I don't like to go. You know what I like to eat, what I don't like to eat. We're, we're all human. We, we find that out. Well, as we go along in our Christian walk, or as Paul says, this, this race or this course that we're on, what we need and what we desire, and I was thinking and praying last night, we really need a revival, a, a revival, and I'm talking about a revival. I'm not just talking about a meeting or a meeting or two. Uh, we really need, we, we need a revival. And, and what happens in that revival, it, we, we get back to that place that I really search God, I, I, I desire God. I want God. I want him every day of my life. I need him every day of my life. I, I need him as comforter. I need him as provider. 
And today we really need him in the world in which we live as God, God Almighty. We need, we need God, amen. Now, no matter what our circumstances and what we're going through today, we, we need to view it in, in a light as to what God is teaching you and I now through your circumstances. Now let that sink in for a moment. I'm not going to say a word. I, I, I just want that to sink in. Do it in the light as to what God is teaching you now through your circumstances. Just let that sink in. I don't know what your circumstance is tonight. But rest assured, God does. I may not know what your need is tonight. But rest assured, He knows it. Matter of fact, if we will see this in the light as to what God is teaching us through our circumstance. Yeah, he taught the children of Israel great things through their circumstance. Did they like it? No. Do we like sometimes the circumstances we find ourselves in? No. And I made a statement the other day. Unless you recognize the circumstance you are in, and I'm talking about the bad circumstances, when you begin to recognize where you are and the circumstance you're in, then you can begin to rely on God and you'll come to know God in many dimensions that you have never known God before. See, God is in many dimensions and he works in mysterious ways with wonders to perform. And I, I believe this in the church. God believes this and I trust this. I preach this that, that signs will follow them that believe. Signs and wonders and miracles. And I am still a believer in miracles. Amen. And God's word is full of miracles. Praise God. And some of you may be sitting there tonight in a circumstance that I do not know, but God, God knows. And maybe this was just for you tonight. Let God speak to you in the middle of your circumstances and then begin to know what God can really do in your life, amen. I'm believing God for some miracles and I'm asking you to believe with me, pray with me, trust with me as the body of Christ and some of, some of you on here, you've never been in our church, but praise God, you're part of the body of Christ. And you know what? We're going to go to heaven together. Amen. We're going to go to heaven together because we know him. Amen. Father, I thank you for this day. I thank you for this time that we've had together. I thank you, God, that you led the children out of, out of Egypt. You led them out of a, a, a critical circumstance. 
and you led them to the promised land. And you provided for them all along the way, the food, the raiment, whatever the need, you were provided. God, whatever our need is today, the world can't provide it. And what we have as a child of God, the world didn't give it to us. And praise God in the highest, the world cannot take it away. And we give thanks and praise and honor to you who sit on the throne. And everybody says, amen and amen and amen. Let, let me share this before we go. Thank you that have been uh, financially faithful through this crisis. And uh, we thank you for every gift that's been sent, every gift that has been brought to the church. And, and, and I, I still go to the mailbox and, and get gifts uh, that people have put in the mail. Remember, P.O. Box 26627, Lawrence, Indiana, 46226. Again, P.O. Box 26627, Lawrence, Indiana, 46226. Amen. Thank you for your gifts. God is faithful. You have been faithful. Remember, tell somebody, 11 o'clock Sunday morning, we'll be right here, Facebook Live, YouTube Live. And by the way, invite somebody to come to church with you. I'm telling you, we're, we're picking back up. Uh, we're just praising God for the attendance that we're having. Uh, we're, we're, we're just a little better now. We're about 60% of where we were at before COVID. And I, I'm looking for that day and, and every week somebody else is coming back. So I'm just giving praise unto God. God bless you. Keep looking up. Keep praying. And God will always be there. Amen. God bless you tonight.